Hi. Now, this is the second video in the series where I'm looking at the Weierstrass substitution, that is t equals tan x upon 2. And I'm assuming that you've watched the previous video where I showed you these two results here. Well, we had a triangle with the angle x in and I was able to work out the lengths of these sides based on this formula here. So we had our sides in terms of t. I also showed you that if you differentiated t here with respect to x, you would end up with this result. Now, what I want to do in this video is just take it a bit further. I'm going to include limits. We're also going to look at a different trig function, sec x in this one, and it's a bit more involved because it's going to involve partial fractions. So let's take you through this one. First of all then, what we need to do is just make that substitution for sec x. Sec x, remember, is 1 over cosine x. Cosine x would compare the adjacent side with the hypotenuse. So it would get 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared for cosine x. We just need to reciprocate that, that is invert it. So we're going to have the integral then of 1 plus t squared over 1 minus t squared. So that's the substitution for sec x. Then we've got to substitute for dx and we take this result here. So that's going to be 2 over 1 plus t squared. And we have the dt on the end. Now with this example we've got limits and we need to change these limits which are with respect to x to limits that are with respect to t. And to do that we should be familiar with this idea. We just need to take our substitution here, t equals tan x upon 2, substitute when x is 0 in and when x equals pi upon 3 in. And you'll see that we get t equals 0 when x is 0, so put that in there. And when x is pi upon 3, we get 1 over root 3. So I put those values in there. So it's just a question now of trying to evaluate this integral in terms of t and then substituting our new limits in. Well, what I can see here is that the 1 plus t squared cancels out with the 1 plus t squared here, leaving me with 2 over 1 minus t squared. And 1 minus t squared factorizes, it's the difference of two squares. 1 plus t, 1 minus t. So if we simplify that integral, we get this. And now we can see that to do this integral, we need to split it into partial fractions. These are linear factors on the bottom, and so they're going to lead to partial fractions of the form a over 1 plus t plus b over 1 minus t. Multiplying throughout by 1 plus t, 1 minus t leads to this line, and we can work out the constants a and b by letting t equal minus 1 gives us a is 1, and when t equals 1, b equals 1. So if I just substitute those values for a and b in, we're going to have this new integral here. Okay, so integrating these two terms, they should be fairly straightforward. They're standard integrals. This one is the natural log of 1 plus t, and this is minus the natural log of 1 minus t. So if you do that, put those limits in, you're going to get that result. And we can use the subtraction rule here for logs, and we get, end up with this result. Substitute our limits in, taking 1 over root 3 first of all. We end up with this term here, and then when you substitute 0 in, you get the natural log of 1, which is there. Okay? Now, natural log of 1 is 0. So we're just left with this term here. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by root 3, and you end up with this value. You could leave it like this, or you might want to rationalize this by multiplying top and bottom by root 3 plus 1. 
If you do, you're going to end up with this result here, the natural log of all of 2 plus root 3. You'll notice I've taken the modulus signs off here and here purely because it's clearly a positive value. OK, so hope that's given you some idea then on this type of question. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in some more videos if you've got any problems.